In the three tests given to Jones, not only did he have the low testosterone to epitestosterone ratio, which indicates testosterone suppression, he had testosterone levels of 180 nanograms per deciliter and 59 nanograms per deciliter. And those are the levels of a dying 90 year old, essentially, or somebody who's using it. What's up guys, Derek, morepolicemortates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about John Jones. I have been asked many times to cover his uh, historical, you know, uh, positive test results and kind of get into my analysis of it and kind of break down what my interpretation is and kind of lay it out in a way that uh, acknowledges all of the comments by uh, the news outlets and whatnot that basically just, uh, you know, said he was clean because of the carbon isotope ratio test and blah, 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 the terrinable metabolites. You know, all the fucking podcasts and shit that have come out on uh, how he's justifiably natural and whatnot, you know, besides even getting into his first positive test results where he tested positive for a selective estrogen receptor modulator, Clomid, and an aromatase inhibitor, Letrozole, which are both nonsensical compounds to have in your system whatsoever unless it was in a post-cycle therapy context or as an ancillary on-cycle to control estrogenic side effects for the AI rather than the CERM would be in a post-cycle therapy context. So like those make no fucking sense to be in your system. And um, above and beyond that, getting into the T-ball metabolite itself, that's what this video is gonna be talking about. So kick back, relax, and <laughs> prepare for me to dissect this shit. So Jones failed multiple times and basically got let off the hook with a one year suspension because he claims he accidentally took some pills that somebody gave him for, you know, dick pills. And as a fighter, would you risk using some random underground shit and not use pharma grade PDE5 inhibitors for your dick? Obviously not. He tested positive for terrinable metabolites before UFC 214, and they still deemed it unintentional, despite the fact that you're basically, supposedly it seems like you're allowed to basically dodge tests several times. And it sounds like a lot of rumors speculate that that's exactly what he did. And you can clear certain fast acting compounds out of your system very quickly but after a very thorough investigation quote unquote an independent arbitrator concluded that jones was not cheating intentionally and handed him a suspension for 18 months he then tested positive again before ufc 232 for the same metabolite that got him in trouble before ufc 214 and as per the scientists involved in the investigation jones did not re-ingest any banned substances at this time a trace amount of metabolite was still lingering in his body and continued to do so for some time. And Vada collected the urine sample from Jones on the weigh-in day before UFC 232 and found that he had 33 picograms of the metabolite M3 in his system. Unlike the first two times, Jones did not get any suspension as he was supposedly innocent as per the commissions. Now, apart from the synthetic anabolic androgenic steroids, which were a lot more obvious to detect, Jones notably had an abnormal testosterone to epitestosterone ratio at the start of 2015. So in this article, it outlines his uh, test results and how they are supposedly a sign of not doping. So Jones ratio of testosterone to epitestosterone in three tests were 0.29 to 1, 0.35 to 1, and 0.19 to 1. The normal ratio for an African-American male is 1.31 to 1. For Caucasian and Hispanic men, it's about 1 to 1. And for Asians, it's about 0.7 to 1. So basically what this ratio is, is it's showing how much testosterone you produce. And epitestosterone is essentially a metabolite that is created endogenously in your body. And you otherwise maintain a pretty normal physiologic ratio of about 1 to 1 for most people. And this is... Something they use to catch people using bioidentical hormones, namely testosterone. So basically, if you have an elevated testosterone to epitestosterone ratio, it would otherwise indicate that you're probably using exogenous testosterone because why would you have a elevated level? So the problem with this is the amount of leeway they have. So... The threshold back then was six to one, which is extremely lenient and has since been reduced to four to one, which is still lenient. But the notable thing here is if you were using exogenous testosterone, your testosterone to epitestosterone ratio would likely be high. And this is where, you know, like Overeem got popped for having a um, testosterone to epitestosterone ratio of like 14 to one or something. Chael Sonnen got popped for a super high one as well. This would indicate exogenous testosterone use. If you had a super low testosterone to epitestosterone ratio, that would indicate exogenous testosterone use likely. Rather, it would indicate that you're using a synthetic anabolic androgenic steroid that's suppressing your endogenous testosterone production, suppressing your HPTA, which is why you would have such a low testosterone to epitestosterone ratio, because otherwise, why would you be producing such a little amount of testosterone? It would make no sense. And the amount of testosterone a natural male produces is about 
600, 650. On average, about 613 nanograms per deciliter. In the three tests given to Jones, not only did he have the low testosterone to epitestosterone ratio, which indicates testosterone suppression, he had testosterone levels of 180 nanograms per deciliter and 59 nanograms per deciliter. And those are the levels of a dying 90 year old, essentially, or somebody who's using exogenous anabolic androgenic steroids without question. So it is pretty obvious to me that Jones has intentionally sauced numerous times, in my opinion, and the suppressed, significantly suppressed endogenous testosterone levels are a red flag as well as the epi testosterone to testosterone ratio and even though they supposedly well they did do carbon carbon isotope ratio testing to see if he used testosterone or not it doesn't fucking matter because they weren't testing for synthetic anabolic androgenic steroids basically what happens is if you have a abnormal testosterone to epi testosterone ratio test result what they then deploy is something called isotope ratio mass spectrometry and this specifically examines the isotopes of carbon 12 and 13 in most cases for figuring out if the testosterone is naturally produced via animal derived, you know, like human derived testosterone via steroidogenesis from cholesterol, or if it is from an external source like plant tissue, because this is where testosterone is typically made from is from uh, Mexican yam. So if further testing didn't find that it came from a plant source, and in fact, it was human derived, which it did. And you know, Jones was supposedly cleared because his carbon isotope ratio tests show that his testosterone is from actual humans. It doesn't fucking matter because the thing we want to test for when you're shut down is not for testosterone. Like, yeah, we still want to test for it because maybe you use tests and you just cleared it out of your system in time. So we might as well check if you have plant tissue derived fucking testosterone in your system too but the main thing is likely a fast acting compound like terinable that would clear to your system in a fast acting time or something else that would otherwise suppress your hpta and result in you getting a fucking super low testosterone to epi testosterone ratio or have your endogenous testosterone production get crushed into the ground like there's no other explanation why a top tier athlete with perfect fucking like a championship athlete with insane genetics would have a fucking 59 nanograms per deciliter test level. It's just unheard of. So he would never have become a champion if that was his actual level and he was using something to suppress it, not intentionally, but he was using something to enhance his performance that had a negative feedback on his HPTA that shut him down. And that is what was indicated by these test results. And it's just people who don't know any better that just think, oh, he got the carbon isotope ratio test and he, he passed. So there we go. He's clean. Like, no, actually, it just fucking shows further when we see his testosterone levels that he, in fact, was definitely doing something. And it must have been pretty significant because if you are using a DHT derivative or a testosterone derivative that clears out of your system very quickly and isn't even a substrate for aromatase, what is the likelihood that it's going to shut you down to that degree? It's not unless you're using a fucking shit ton of it. So... This is just a uh, you know slap in the face to the public, in my opinion, that this was a well-known fucking fact and no one even addressed it. Now, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All your comments are appreciated. As you help the algorithm, please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredays.com. I highly recommend you subscribe to the newsletter. It's the first link in the description below. You will not get sent those articles if you don't sign up for that. And there's a lot of incentive to do so as I actually break down the content into concise subsections with table of contents and I hyperlink all of the clinical literature I reference for you to delve into further yourself for your own education if you wish um, within the content and um, a lot of incentive to do that because you won't get sent those articles if you don't sign up for that. If you want to support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Um, my TRT clinic, my turnkey nootropic and pre-workout formulas I designed myself from scratch based on my years of research. And if you want to follow me on other social media platforms, that'd be cool too. Um, I like to try and diversify. And if you can follow me on all those, um, obviously that helps grow the brand kind of like universally in parallel with one another. So Instagram at more plates, underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, and Apple podcasts. If you want to listen on audio instead of burn through your data, Watching me on YouTube, if you're at the gym, if you're driving, I highly recommend you subscribe to the podcast platform. You can listen on audio and download them and listen to them on the go. So thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.